Today is Monday, July 29th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed here today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Soderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Mark, starting with the grain markets this morning, what's it going to take to shake the bear sentiment that's overwhelming the ag space right now? Yeah, unfortunately, Kurt, uh, prices are at or near three, four-year lows pretty much across the entire agricultural space. Uh, U.S. weather has been mostly favorable, which continues to support talk of record yields for both uh, corn, soybeans, and even spring wheat as well. So with weather and supplies continuing to tilt the bearish, uh, demand is going to have to do most of the heavy lifting in terms of swinging the market sentiment back uh, around to bullish. And right now, that seems to be a pretty tall order. Uh, new crop corn and soybean export commitments are uh, starting to show some signs of improvement. However, we're still near historically low levels, uh, and beans are starting to see some Chinese purchases and, and purchases by unknown buyers. However, you know, we're still at the lowest level in decades. So uh, historically, it's just hard to change this bearish sentiment this time of year with farmers still sitting on a large amount of old crop inventory while new crop yield potential is so high. Uh, but hey, never say never. There's still time to run into some, some late season weather problems that could disrupt this year's production like we saw in 2020. Uh, and I do believe that uh, we'll see both corn and soybean acres come down a touch here in this August USDA report. So there's uh, still you know, there's still some things out there that could shake these speculative traders out of their short positions. Uh, but right now, it's uh, you know weather is, is is just is just too favorable. Yeah, that next next production report. Any early thoughts there? Yeah, I think we're going to see corn yields uh, hit record levels across several key production states, most notably Iowa. The average uh, record yield was set in Iowa in 2021 at 204 bushels an acre. Uh, I would look for yields this year to press 210, possibly even higher. Good chance for record yields in Missouri, Indiana, possibly Nebraska. I want to roll out Illinois challenging record yields of 214 bushels an acre. That was set two years ago. Uh, so I, I, I do think the USDA and all will raise that uh, their current yield forecast of 181, I'm leaning towards uh, 183 and a half with a slight drop in acres that would put production just over 15.2 billion. That's about 125 million below last year's record crop. Similar story in beans is I do expect record yields of uh, 53 and a half is the number I'm leaning at right now. That's above the USDA's current estimate of 52. Even with a six to 700,000 uh, drop in acres, which I do expect we'll see from uh, preventative planting uh, issues, in, particularly in the Northwestern uh, corn and soybean belt, uh, that would produce a record crop of uh, just over 4.5 billion, which keeps the pressure on from the supply side. Outside of weather, Mark, and I know we're watching weather, it looks like we've had good weather most of the growing season. What other reports this week and, and, and coming up here could impact prices? Uh, start off, we do get crop progress and conditions uh, this afternoon where I'd expect to see lower ratings uh, due to hot, dry conditions last week in the southern plains and far western Corn Belt. Uh, then we also get some key usage data out here uh, latter part of this week, starting Wednesday, where we'll get a monthly biofuel capacity and feedstock usage data. Then on Thursdays after the close, we'll get our monthly census crush numbers on soybeans along with corn grind uh, for the usage in ethanol production. So hopefully we'll start to see some uh, stronger figures here, some improved signs of demand, help stabilize prices here a little bit, and hopefully carve out some 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 lows here soon. And let's talk about some of the other markets. As you look at the markets you cover, which ones do you think have the most profit potential currently? Okay, so right now it's the interest rate market futures that have the, the, the fundamentals that are most aligned in one way, and that is to the uh, upside. So in addition to the flight to quality influence that is helping futures today in light of increased geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, there's the increasingly bullish interest rate influence as we are seeing prospects of a pivot from the Fed to accommodation this year. Now, most likely at the upcoming July 31st uh, FOMC meeting, the Wednesday meeting, there will be no change. But at every subsequent meeting, there appears to be a very strong possibility that the Fed will be cutting by 25 basis points. In fact, at, at the 
September meeting, there's virtually a 100% chance of a rate cut. The November meeting, 64% chance of a rate cut and about 64% chance of another rate uh, cut in December. So I believe it will be futures at the mid curve that will be leading the way higher, especially the five and 10 year notes uh, should be the leaders. In fact, uh, those contracts have recently made some new highs uh, for the move. Uh, but but futures across the board, I think, will trend higher. But mid-curve futures, I think, should lead the way higher. We'll watch that. Now, copper is an interesting metals market due to it being a very industrial metal. What is your outlook for the copper market right now? So copper futures have put in a rather poor performance as of late, declining recently to 11 uh, week lows. Uh, so a lot of pressure to developing, and it's the supply situation that seems to be pulling futures down. Uh, also, there seems to be limited demand. So that, I think, is the overriding fundamental uh, that will probably continue to pressure the copper futures. Now, the interest rate influence is a bullish factor, but I think it will be far outweighed by the demand situation. So I would not be surprised to see uh, copper falling under the psychological $4 per pound support level. And Alan, what are the major economic reports and or events that can move markets this week? Okay, so on Tuesday, we'll, we'll have the July Consumer Confidence Index guest at 99.5. Wednesday, we'll have the Federal Open Market Committee meeting uh, statement and Powell press conference. And then on Friday, non-farm payrolls for July guest at up 180,000 and the unemployment rate uh, part of, the, of that report anticipated to be unchanged at 4.1%. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokerage services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.